Hello, how are you? This is Jilly Bling. I have a project using Sweet Candy Cane's bundle and also Christmas Banner's bundle. And if it looks familiar, it's because it's very similar to the project in the catalog. On page 8, um, Stampin' Up! has a great way of combining Christmas Banner's and Sweet Candy Cane bundles together to make many of these projects. So, this is today's project, and what drew me to this project, um, and I have to say, quite a few of you I saw when you were flipping through the catalog for the first time, you saw this project, you're like, what is that? And I still love it. So we'll be doing this, which is a die in the candy cane, um, the dies in the candy cane bundle. And this little thing right here is a die included in the um, candy cane bundle and it's for like a little greeting to just decorate a candy cane which would be a great gift for all those important people in your life that you're not wanting to get them a huge gift. So I'll be using those two bundles. Okay. So I got this ready last night, so I'm hoping I didn't forget anything. Paper, paper, papers. So let's start out with just doing the card basics. Fold the base paper in half. And these two papers, one of them will be cut down after I die cut it. And these are four and a quarter by five and a half. So they're the same size as the card front. And I'm going to use this big die here. And when you put it on the papers, it's important to have it straight or it um, with equal distance all the way around when you run it through. And on the first pass, I didn't do that, but I'll show you how you can fix it. So we're going to do that on both of these papers. Here they are. So one of them, I just plopped it on there, and it's not very straight. As you can see, this is narrower, this is wider, and it is a little bit crooked. This one I caught on and thought, I really should do that straight. So one of them we will need to trim, so this is no big deal. So you could take your paper cutter and just leave maybe uh, an eighth of an inch. But because it's going to be hidden, you can also use your snips. So I'm just going to make it just a little bit smaller. And you can see I'm not doing it perfectly. Just so you have enough um, area of paper to put glue on. And it just has to be smaller than the top one. This will be the bottom one. So when you die cut something, do you notice that one side seems like it's the top because the edges are a little bit rounded down? And then there is the other side and the edges are opposite. But that's what's gonna be on the underneath. So you probably are like, that's all, let's do it. Very easy. So I will put glue on the perimeter of this one that's a little bit smaller. And if you want, you could put glue on some of the inside um, bars going across because most of it will be covered up with the decoration of the candy canes and the banner. So I'll just put it in just a few spots. And chances are when I put the other one over, it won't line up and maybe this will be an open area, but it's okay because it's going to be, it will be hidden. Okay, so there's that. And I could put it right down on here. Let me try doing it this way. And I know I'm going to have to shuffle it around a little bit. 
because I see some of it showing through here. I think it needs to be pulled this way just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Most of it will be covered anyhow. Okay, and as you can see, there's plenty of glue showing through, but that will be covered by all the decorations and prettiness. I see some of the under piece right here. So I'll try to shift it a bit. And a little bit there. And it's not perfect, but I'll just leave it. Leave it to dry. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry flat, become one unit, and then I'll put it on here with dimensionals. So let's start on pieces. So this is the banner, and in the banners um, bundle, there are three different banners, like the ziggle zaggle one, just the arch, and then this kind of ruffled one. And um, last week I did five projects using Christmas banners and they all turned out so pretty. While making that, I noticed if you're using this one, this is best for little words and then big words over here. And you could flip the banner around. There's no up or down, big words and then little words. And um, that was a little fun to find out because I was trying to squeeze big words on the little side and it just, it wasn't working out. And then all of a sudden light went on. <gasps> And it worked out well. Okay, so real red. And if ever you're stamping and you get ink on the inside, um, it's okay as long as you don't stand up and push with all of your pressure. Because what we're trying to do when stamping is just try to get the tips of the stamp, all the high parts, to um, release the ink. And if you put just a regular amount of pressure on it, just like this, a little bit of pressure, it turns out just fine. So you don't always have to be cleaning that and cleaning the edges. Just go straight down, pressure, and then straight up. And it should work just fine. Okay, so the sample I did, Merry Christmas. Oh, and the ink pads we're using are four of them. Soft Suede, Real Red, and Garden Green, Versamark. So this time I want to do Season's Greetings. And, because I'm smart about it now, I want that to dry. Um, which words are bigger? Greetings. So I'm going to do it like this. As opposed to, turn it over, which is fine, but Season's fits on there no problem. Greetings doesn't fit on there. So learn from my mistakes. Greetings. I probably should have my foam mat out, but it's behaving just fine. Seasons. And for some reason, this stamp set and getting everything all lined up in there, it works like a breeze. Sometimes things are such a struggle. And for some reason, not this one. Oh, you know what? I'll, sh I'll show you what. When you go to put this on to cut it, okay, I'm lucky. But if it doesn't fit and you're lining up the edges and you're like, oh, it's going to cut it off, just flip it over and it'll work just fine. Okay, hold on. I have one partially done, just not the words. So we get to do it again. Seasons. Season's greetings, or Merry Christmas. Okay, so, all these little pieces and candy canes. Let's do, let's do the candy canes. Candy canes, okay, I have a little, I have a little hint on candy canes. Candy canes, this is a distinctive set. When it says distinctive, that means it's, um, 
the shading makes it look realistic. For instance, if you were to look at the candy canes, see how it's darker on this side? Um, on the leaf, see how it's a little bit darker closer to the center? And then at the tips of the leaves, they're a little bit lighter. And Stampin' Up! has done some beautiful sets, and I'm thinking about Forever Fern, um, with a distinctive stamp. Okay, that's great, but if you go to use um, embossing powder and Versamark, that means it's probably going to be heavy and ink over here, just because that's what the stamp has happened. But then when you go to put the powder on, it's kind of freckly in these other areas. So I try to get smart. And I'll show you what I did, but it doesn't really, um, it's just, it's just an experiment. Maybe I could show you on here. This one is just stamped and you could see how I have some light areas. I didn't like that. So I dipped it in twice and this is much more solid, but I also have a lot of overage, even after using my embossing buddy. So we'll try it once. Maybe today's a good day and it will work out. Who knows? Okay, embossing buddy. Versamark ink. Candy cane. This is a brand new pad, so I know there's plenty of ink on here. So I'm going to put it in the powder. And then while it's still hot, I'm going to dip it in the powder, well, at least half of it again. Because the hot powder will help hold more um, embossing powder. Okay, there's not much overage on there. Looking good, but, but. dip. Dip in the pool of white embossing powder. Ooh, this one might work. Okay, I don't know that it's worth it to do that double dip and stuff. Like when you're at a party, you don't double dip. Okay, so I do have a bit more overage, but look how glossy and shiny it is at the top and the bottom. And that's just one layer of embossing powder. So, I, I don't know that it's worth it. But it's good to play and try around sometimes. Okay, let's do the other candy cane. So, that one, now this one. I'm sure that there's instances when it would be a good idea to do the, the double dip. This time it just... It doesn't, it doesn't add, it distracts. I guess you could put it on Stamparatus 
and um, Versamark stamp it a second time. Okay, so the one is a little bit more solid, but a little messier. It's up to you. Okay, so there are dies for each of the candy canes. Okay, so the remaining dies, these are my masks. We'll use those on the inside. This one is for the twig, and that's going to be done in soft suede. This is kind of the fur, and that will be done in um, vellum. And when you stamp this one, I have all these pieces. Um, you really don't need the stem because you end up tucking that in. So cut a few of those. This is for the berries. Those are stamped on white and cut. I have all this done for you in just a minute. And then there's the holly. And there's two different directions of the holly. Okay. So for this project, I hope you could see these. Oh, you can. There's three vellum fur. There's two twigs with a set of berries. And there's four sets of holly leaves. And that's just what I used to make this, but you could use any combination. If you're really liking this vellum, do a whole bunch of those. So for the holly, I'm going to have it in like a, a little connecting sprig. So I'm going to glue those together just down at the bottom, just a little bit. I probably shouldn't do this on my glitter paper. This is for the next project. I got my pre-order from the upcoming um, mini catalog that will be released in January. And I'm so excited. It's just sitting there in the box. And that's because I've kind of turned over the Christmas. I'm, I'm ready to do Christmas stuff right now. And all of that is non-Christmas. And I just finally got into the Christmas mode. So I need to stay here just a little longer. So it's kind of kind of silly just to have it sitting in the box. Um, the berries. Put just a little bit of glue. I shouldn't be doing this on the glitter paper. My glue is coming out all on its own. Okay, close that glue up. So, oh, pick a rubber tool. Hope you all have one of these. It's lovely. That is the putty side. Oh, this is a brand new one. Let me get my other pick a rubber. <gasps> that one, the putty's coming out all on its own. So when I put these berries on, I kind of want the berries all facing in one direction, which will identify that's the top, the shiny point. Like the berry is glistening with the, the light on it. Oh, good thing it dries clear, but it might smear my ink. Oh, it just looks like a double highlight. <laughs> okay. New little bit of putty. Now 
it's behaving. Maybe that was old putty. Okay, so this one is done. I'm just going to let that dry. Isn't that cute? Okay, and now the same with this one. This one, I want it to go this direction. Okay, I need to get off this glitter paper. I don't know what I was thinking. It was just handy. Now this one, I want the highlight to be on the top. It's so cold outside. Not snowing or anything, but definitely not warm. It's like the heater's been going all morning, trying to catch up with, trying to catch up with us. A putty, a putty poop. See, now I'll know if you're watching. If next time I see you, if you say that, I'll know you're watching this project. Okay, I think we're ready to start building. So, we have all of our elements. So I'm gonna put dimensionals, big dimensionals on here. And I'll put the ribbon in it. So I'm gonna put five or six, kinda of like loaded up with dimensionals. And probably at the end, I might even need to put more because the ribbon might take up all the stickiness. Five, I'm doing five today, for now. Oh, my new favorite, white, but it has a fancier name. Oh, here, glittered organdy ribbon. <gasps> it's so pretty. It's like, it's snowy, it's sheer. I love this ribbon. Okay, so before you cut the ribbon, let's lay it out. So I'm looking at it down here, let me, let me get that piece of glitter paper because then you could see the white against the red a little better. <clears throat> so I want this one to be here, hoping that there's a dimensional <coughs> to hold it in its place. That might be too big. Okay, so just a little there. And then this gets a ruffle. And I don't want to make it too big, otherwise I'll cover up all the, the prettiness I'm going to tuck in. But just see how I'm just doing it as like a little back and forth, back and forth. Oop, there's no dimensional there. Okay, six dimensionals. Six. Perfect place. Now see, to me that's too uniform. So I'll make it a little bigger, a little wider. Then, this one could be shallower. So that one's longer, this one's a little shorter. Okay, and trim it. Pretty, pretty, pretty ribbon. Okay, so where's our front? Well, we have to finish up the front. Let's get that stuck together. It's had long enough to dry, right? So this is going to get dimensionals, and you need mostly big dimensionals, but you might need a few small ones. Big dimensional definitely will fit in the corner. I think there's one corner. All of a sudden, it's like, I need a little one there. That might be the, I'll, I'll try doing a big one. Oh, it's close. See, it's, it's funny how there's just one that is happier with the little guy. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a few more on because this is a little bit delicate. It's a little bit of opposite of strong. Okay, so that is nine dimensionals. And then this should fit right over the top exactly because it's the same size paper. Okay, there we go. You see it happening? 
and candy canes. So I like this one better. So I'm going to put glue right here. Then I'll put these on with dimensionals. But I just want these to hold together as one unit. Candy cane. Candy cane. And I'm looking at the bottom. Just a little crossover. And I did try it on the sample to make them kind of stagger. It's like, nah, don't need to do that. And dimensional this thing. Keep them stuck together. Okay, that should do it. So this goes, I wonder, can it go the other direction? That might work. Okay, I don't know about placement of stuff. I don't have a plan. Okay, I'm just going to go for it. Maybe a little bit low on the words. And I'll probably need to put more dimensionals underneath after I get this decorated. So, I will start out with vellum. Do you like vellum? I like vellum. Hints of it here and there. Lately, I've been using a lot. So, I'm putting glue just under the end of it. And I'm fine if it kind of pops up a little bit. Okay, I don't know about placement now. Now that I'm doing it a different direction. I know I like the ribbon. So I want the ribbon to go over the top. I had to think about the berries. There's only two berries. All right. And berries. Is that just the cutest? So this I'm going to stick on with glue down at the bottom right now. I might add more glue to it if it seems a little frail. How about, I don't want that to take away. So I'm gonna put it underneath the vellum so it's a little bit muted. If I had it on top, your eye would be saying, am I looking at the words? Am I looking at the candy cane? What's going on? Okay, and the holly. I really like the holly. Yeah, maybe I could put these on with dimensionals. Mini dimensionals. I go through so many dimensionals. I even have the numbers memorized. It's kind of tucked under there. There's four of them. I think I'm supposed to do it in uneven numbers. Maybe, maybe one grouping will be more hidden. But it's really cute. Oh, my glue is dripping. If ever your glue is dripping, the way to fix it, just open it up. Open it up, let the air bubble out. Okay, now it will stop dripping. Where does it get that pressure? I don't know. I don't know. But it's fixed now. And 
And then next step is make sure everything is secure on the front and then add a three little bling. Okay, so candy canes look good. These vellum pieces, I know they're stuck down at the bottom. That looks good. Well, everything is pretty good. Okay, bling. And um, you can use any bling you have. I think these just retired. But they're kind of understated because it's the same color. But I think rhinestones or iridescent rhinestones would go great with the, um, the glittered organdy ribbon. So whatever you have, it's good. So the outside is done. Look at us. And inside time. So season's greetings. I didn't plan this far. Um, on this one, Merry and Bright. That's really nice. And I want to do the holly again. So how about... I like candy cane wishes and mistletoe kisses, but I don't have any mistletoe on there. How about wishing you lots of love, joy, and happiness this Christmas season and always. That sounds good. That sounds really nice. So that can be in red ink because I'm going to do the holly in green. Got to represent it all. I don't think I want suede in there. Oh, pretty. Okay, so let's do the holly. So the holly is two little leaves, holly leaves. And as we did on the front, I'm gonna make them seem like they're um, a bit of one unit. Show you what I mean. Holly and the second one. You know what? Because I know I'm going to do the berries, I'm going to try something here. Because I would say. You can't have floating leaves like that. And on the sample, I have them all the way down at the bottom because I wasn't having a stem, but I know I'm going to put that brown um, suede stem on it. So let me try just one of those. I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. Okay, maybe a little bit over here just because I like it. I like the green. I like the holly. I like the stamp. Okay, done with that. Now, berries. I was thinking, should I do berries first or the stem first? I think berries. Because berries, berries rock. Berries rule it, not the stem. So, I need my little masks. You know what a mask is. You know what that is. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you think, "What are you doing?" That's that's weird. It's going to protect the leaf, so I don't get berry ink on it. Then it'll look like the holly is um, back behind the holly, or the um, berries are back behind the holly leaf. That's the plan. It just needs to be good enough. It doesn't have to be 
perfect. I'm going to have to place these right back on here to do the branch. Probably should have had it going at the same time. You know what they say about hindsight. Okay, I might put more berries on. But for now, that's good. Soft suede branches. Mm. It's going to work. Oh, and I have to try my little experiment with the... Okay, so my experiment is to leave Okay, does it look right? Yeah, it looks like there's a branch feeding the holly. Okay. Um, there's just all kinds of berries over here. I'm going to find their, their branch. That's one. I think this is one. And one more. Okay, so when I pull these little masks up, you're going to see that it was worth it. We'll see if we need more berries. I think because this one looks like it's lost, I'm going to put maybe it's just a long old stem. Looks good. I think that was the hardest part of this whole project. Not that it was hard. The masking. Okay, keep these little things. And get the insides in. And then I think we're done with this one. So if you just stamped just holly at the bottom. This one is a breeze. <gasps> Isn't that pretty? I love it when it's matted and layered up like that. It looks good. Okay, so which direction do you like better? Portrait or landscape? I think this one, it gets, it fills out the card front a little bit more, but I like both of them. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day.